Turning to markets now, Kristen Scholler is live on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Hello, Kristen. How are markets looking this Monday morning? It's going to be a, a rough day, Hannah. Markets still looking at a calamitous open. The volatility on the floor of the Stock Exchange will continue despite emergency action from the Fed late Sunday. It's second emergency move this month. Trading is set to be paused right after the open at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time if the losses hold, all to avoid panic selling. Late last night, stock futures hit the limit down threshold of a 5% loss. Take a look across the board. Once we open, the threshold is 7%. If we fall 7%, which we are setting up to do, trading will be paused for 15 minutes. We will then reopen. If we fall 13%, that's another 15-minute pause. And if we reach a drop of 20% in the markets today, we will be closed for the rest of the day. What you want to do is follow the ETFs that track these major indices to get a sense of how markets will open. The SPY, the ETF that tracks the S&P 500, down 10% this morning, erasing Friday's gains. The QQQ that moves in tandem with the NASDAQ, down 9%. And the DIA, the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, down worse than 10% this morning. And the fastest ever emergency move by the Fed last night, it did cut rates to near 0% and launched a $700 billion quantity easing program. This gave more liquidity to the bond market with investors dumping stocks this morning to buy up safe havens like bonds and gold. Last week, investors were dumping everything in the down market. But after the Fed's move, we see the market functioning more properly, even though stock losses are significant this morning. The Fed's move does come just days before a planned meeting of the U.S. central bankers midweek. Central bankers around the world, meanwhile, are stepping in to ease from the fallout of the virus. That that is hitting businesses and consumers and expected to only get worse in the U.S. Central banks of South Korea and New Zealand also slashing borrowing costs and the Bank of Japan increasing its asset purchases in an effort to provide liquidity. The Dow Jones and S&P 500 both entering a bear market last week down worse than 20 percent from their all-time highs as global recession fears mount. Goldman Sachs estimating zero growth for the first quarter and a five percentage point contraction in the second quarter with major banks like J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, and Bank of America suspending stock buybacks to aid the country and its clients during this time. Remember, the technical definition of a recession is two straight quarters of losses. Goldman Sachs sees flat growth for the current period. J.P. Morgan, meanwhile, estimates that we will see a negative contraction in the first quarter for U.S. GDP. Take a look at Asian markets here. They were slammed overnight with losses of more than 3% at their close. Australia losing nearly 10% of its value, its biggest daily drop in history and Europe not doing much better with London and France both leading losses of more than 8 percent amid lockdowns in the European region. All this contributing to a gloomy outlook with airlines in the region slammed.